Hello everyone, this is Brent from Enter Your Wealth and I'm so happy that you're here today because I'm unveiling my beginner's adventure mode guide for the Kerbata battle game. In this article, we'll be going through the first 33 levels of adventure mode, positioning, and the best craps to use. There will be intermediate and advanced guides covering the last 67 levels, so make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see that. As always, the Medium article will be in the description. So let's start off with picking the right crabs. Uh, it is my belief that you need four crabs to clear most of the game, and these crabs are the ones I've used to three-star the entirety of the first 33 levels. First, we have the Prime with the Avax pincers and the Bitcoin or Cardano eyes. Next, we have the Gem. Uh, most people are sleeping on these gems, but I think it's one of the best for clearing the adventure mode. Next, this is a pretty rare one. I happen to have two of these puppies, but these are really hard to find. Any 220% ruined is fine though, which you can definitely find. And, um, and then lastly is the Surge. They are just a really strong character, even in the battle game. But honestly, if you're going for a more budget build, you can do these three, and I think you can get on fine, and you can just use a Surge or a Bulk for a flex pick. But honestly, this is more useful for a three star. So my top three picks would be these three. And then if you have some extra uh, discretionary cash, you can use this one, this surge instead. Um, I mentioned here how you don't need to have the best form, but these are just mentioned so that you could develop your intuition on the crabs that are good um, and buy comparable side grades and find undervalued crabs in the marketplace. So just as a precursor, this is a guide for clearing with a bare minimum of one star. <laughs> three starring generally happens when you have a combined level of three X above said level. I'll mention some two to three star tactics occasionally. So to find out how you can three star a specific level is to join our GameFi NFT Discord. You can just ask me directly there and I'll tell you how I think you should do it based on your characters. The positioning that I use in this guide is not always optimal for 3 starring, it's optimal for usually defeating the level. Alright, let's begin. So level through 1 through 4, I call this leveling priority. So the first 4 levels should be easy to 3 star um, just by tr trial and error and I show that here. Um, it doesn't really matter what you do, uh, but mainly what you want to take from here is that you want to be leveling your ruined first to your level cap and then prime Then your tanks Okay, this is this is the order we're taking for leveling for now So this is not always constant in the guide by the way Anytime you get stuck on a level you pretty much need to get to the next fifth level meaning the increments of 5 10 15 20 because that's when you get a really huge stat increase for your team. If you get stuck somewhere, that might just be a signal that you need to reach the next fifth level. Okay, so level five, the first boss. And it's an easy three star, and it's what you need to do to gain access to the battle game. Okay, main threat is this Cardano Prime focus it. We position like this to burn down the Cardano Prime and then take out this sunken with our rune. Okay, level six, the first Tuffy. So I say this is the equivalent of picking Charmander into Brock in the first Pokemon games. If you know, you know. This should be possible in moderate attempts, but this is a pretty hard three star. So yeah, this is a pretty hard three star. You don't really do this three star until you out level it. And that's the case with a number of these fights. At least if you wanna do it in moderate attempts. Level seven, easier than level six. So there's, after every boss, there tends to be easier fights. As last time, main threat is always the Cardano Prime. Take it out ASAP. Calm before the star. I say this is a, a, a very easy fight. Definitely go for a two to three star. Since we have two Prime, we have the factional advantage over this. These squid-like things, they don't even have an ability, so they're quite easy to deal with. And why I have this Prime in the front line, I'm, it's serving as an off tank, so he will take some damage from here. You will clear this faster than it can really damage you. And then these two will be focusing your gem. Just a way that you can you can apply this principle to other fights. But the idea is we're just taking some damage because you know health is uh, health is something that you need to be utilizing well uh, to get two and three stars. So I think even early on you can three star this one if you do this tactic here. You can also put your surge here and then prime here. That could also work if he's your prime can't survive this but ultimately i think this is what will work 
Also, you could even put your surge in this spot right here, and then that could also work, especially if your prime is surviving, but your gem is not surviving. That is another thing that you can do. As you can see here, the calm before a storm, a little bit less of a calm. So go for the two star here. This is a similar setup. You're just trying to focus the prime here. We have this positional setup so that once this dies, we will take this out. Not, nothing more to say than that. Okay, level 10, the storm. So this fight is pretty tough because you have these two primes and um, this spot right here is really hard to deal with because you cannot focus it with more than two targets in the back line. You can focus it with two targets in the front line, but the problem is your front line is usually a tank, so he won't really be able to do damage. This guy isn't, it would be so much worse if this was a Cardano, right? But this guy also does a lot of damage. You may need a little, little bit of a level difference to do there. Okay, so new beginnings. So after a boss fight, so each five levels is a boss fight, there's a, a little bit of an easier fight. And we start to see these squid sunkins. Remember, this whole time you should be pumping these shells into your rune, and this is the reason why. New beginnings, we first see the squid here, and we're just pretty much set up to, after we destroy this, to focus this little squid. These aren't that hard, so it's pretty fine. And then I put not a particularly interesting section because it's kind of similar to this. You know, you have these ones, our primes do well here, and then we just focus the DPS. Always it's about focusing the DPS and ignoring tanks if we can. That's pretty much the game plan as always. Okay. There are some two to three star tactics you can use on these ones, but it's, you know, I'm not going to mention it. Literally the same fight at maybe 0.0001% harder. Yeah, so not much different. These three next three fights are the same. So deja vu, deja, deja vu vu. I'm not going to say much about it. It's the same fight basically. So you'll be able to cruise those if you cruise the other ones. So it begins. So this is the first time you see this type of um, squid. Yeah, so we focus down this guy. He's your ultimate threat. We also see the emergence of this craboid, which you may think is dangerous, but as you know, craboids are not looking so hot in the marketplace right now. Little Squid is the hard mob from this aquatic theme series. Focus him first, always. Okay. A rune sweat dream. Um, so we continue to see this theme of the sunken and the craboid. That's why we went with the rune here. The rune is really good against these two, obviously. So we're set up in a way to take this out. Level 17. Same kind of idea here. Um, we're, we're positioning our rune always to be in line with this sunken. So after we take out this one, we'll be prioritizing this sunken with our rune. It's still sunken season. So same principle as before. We line up with our rune against the sunken. The sunken cause fallacy. Okay. I hope you like that pun, by the way. <laughs> More of the same, just lining up the rune with the sunken here. Nothing too different there. Um, that's pretty much it. And finally, level 20, you may be here for a while. Yeah, so this is where a lot of people get stuck, and it's because these three mobs together are so strong. They fill up their pincer ability so fast, and it's just really hard to beat it. So this is probably the hardest fight in the first 33 levels. Thankfully, we have a high level room which does swimmingly versus these Squidward looking mofos. You can consider dual tanking with another surge or bulk if you have one, but then you have two front lines and then you're just hoping that your rune can really go to town. Other thing is you can switch your prime for another rune. If you are able to get your prime to level five at this point already, you know, I think it's better to just keep your prime in than another rune. But it really depends on your rune's ability. Uh, there's all these small things that may matter whether you should do that or not. Um, so do not get too frustrated. This may just mean you need time to level up. Eventually it will go. Remember each five levels you get a huge jump in power so maybe you just need to hit that next fifth level. Level 21. So uh, thankfully after we get that we get a little bit of a break. Get some easy surges and this like new little little uh, spider thing. I put a new leveling prospect here. It's because this is the inflection point. So. At this point, you should have only been pumping your rune with purple shells, but now is the inflection point. The next series of fights, including the boss, revolve around having a strong Lux type. A new leveling priority is born, pr 
prime slash gem or rune. Also swap in your gem for your search. Above should be easy enough. So you can see I swap back in the gem here. Whether you level up your gem, you know, that's kind of up to your own discretion. Um, the only problem is so after, so this goes beyond this guide here, but just to so you understand, in the level 40s or so, um, you start to see a lot of these craboids again, and they're really strong. They're not like a joke like before. So have, being overstacked in the prime starts to hurt you in that end. So that's why I don't necessarily think it's always a great idea, um, but it will help you beat the next um, stages. That's why if you are able to level up four characters, these are the four characters you do want to level because you do want to be able to swap out your tanks for each other and then everything is pretty much in neutral grounds. Right, you, a prime. So you see that we see for the first time an AVAX Pinsir Prime. It does a lot of damage. Same principle as in the previous cases where we saw primes and that is we focus them down really fast if we can. Old habits die hard, focus him ASAP. The format above ensures that. So we have these two focusing this once this first organic is taken down. An easy fight, an easy fight. Okay, these guys don't even have ability, so you just killed them, okay. Um, here's level 24, which is good thing we didn't all in surge. Yeah, so this fight would be really hard if you had a surge tank, and that's because they all have he has a factional disadvantage versus all of these, especially an AVAX Pinsir Prime, which you will see does a ton of damage, which is not surprising if you're not if you're not new to this channel. Choice here: try focusing the Prime, um, so you would have your characters actually in line with this. Um, but if that does not work, use this above setup. So what this ends up doing is tries to burn down this organic first, and then have everyone collapse on the Prime. This fight is difficult, you may need a level to make it out, make it go. Um, and then actually, I don't know if this fight is harder than this one, it might be. This is technically a boss fight, but this is quite a far hard fight. So if you beat that one, I think usually you're able to beat this one as well. Um, the main difference here, instead of having that prime, which is a huger threat, um, we have um, this surge. Basic, basically, you can see it's mostly just they leveled these guys up a lot. So that's the main difference here. You might, you could get stuck here as well, just because of the level discrepancy. But that's about it. This is where having a prime leveled up starts to pay dividends. A pretty hard fight, if not. You can play around with dual tanks and also swapping the position of rune and prime above. Not much else you can do. It doesn't go make it go by leveling up. Primed and ready to go. This fight isn't too bad, but you can see why we're pumping our Luxes, again, I'm mentioning that. Uh, the organic up front, the rest should be fine. You just focus this, this isn't a hard fight. This also isn't a hard fight, I'm not going to mention much about it too, just for conciseness. And this is a really easy one, but a little foreshadowing here, easy arachnophobia. So, this is an easy fight, I would suggest going for a 2 or 3 star on this one for sure. Um, and if what you can do is you can put your rune here as a as an off tank to soak up damage so that your gem can survive. And if he can't survive that, then you might have to put all three in one line, and possibly you can get a three star that way. A rune awakening. So this is the first time we see the rune here, and he hurts a lot. His ability does a lot of damage but this is a pretty hard fight. All these rune fights are actually some of the hardest fights. <laughs> All right, and this is Arachnophobia. The purple rune crab is sure to ruin your day, packing quite the punch with a bulky gem in front. There is no nuance. This is a stat checker. Either you got what it takes or you don't. You're really not winning this unless you're able to win the 1v1 against this purple crab or this rune crab. So whatever Whatever um, is higher level to beat this rune crab is what you'll put here, really. It's not so much about this factional advantage. It's But this guy is hard to deal with because he's so tanky and you might not have enough health uh, to survive him. So yeah, it's just taking out this guy is a priority. As you can see, you get quite, amount of, uh, quite a big amount of shells. This is um, probably the second hardest fight in all of the... Yeah, this is probably the second hardest fight, I would say. I really think the sunken fight is the hardest ones. 
uh, or it's the hardest one for your level at least. Yeah. So no nuance, stat checker. Are the runes here to stay? As this guide comes to a close, no they are not here to stay, at least as much in between the major boss fight. These fellers hurt, you can try swapping your surge in here depending on how you are distributing your shells. Really hard fight because these all do a lot of damage besides this uh, uh, dude up here. You know, there's not really much you can do. I would say that you can try to use uh, two tanks. Also, you can try putting the gem here. So once you kill this guy, he'll start focusing this. Actually, that is ideal here. So I actually messed this one up. Um, you do want your gem down here, ideally, because you want to focus this after you kill this, because this isn't, this uh, surge is not, or is this a bulk, sorry. This bulk is not as much of a threat, okay? This is much a bigger threat. Um, and when I said the are the runes here to say is so basically you you have this guide is going to come to an end just for the first 33 levels but what happens after this is that you're going to have some pretty inten in, uh, intensive um, prime checkers meaning that your primes are going to be doing most of the heavy lifting in those fights so the runes don't come back till the after the next boss and yeah they're pretty tough but for right now you're focusing on getting your primes up. Um, a glass cannon. This fight is just pure damage. <laughs> Whoever out TPSs wins. Um, and I say that here. You can even try running triple damage yourself, but I don't know if that would work. Um, it's a high RNG battle because if anyone's of, if any one of these crabs crits, you pretty much will lose. But it may not be a hard fight depending on RNG. Also, getting a stun here is so much more powerful so if you do have special stun characters that are high level could be really good here anticlimactic should be a le little easier than stage 32 also very rng so it's like kind of the same fight except um you don't have to deal with this actually i think this might be a harder fight now that i look at it just because i think this guy is so hard to take out that you end up just getting clapped by these two so i'm actually mistaken on that Okay. That's all for now. Look out for the intermediate and advanced guide that will come out when, you know, I finish those levels. I, I'm getting close. Um, we'll see. Well, at least for the next section, the intermediate section. The advanced section, I don't know how long that's going to take, but I hope everyone is doing well. As always, you can reach out to me on Twitter, and I will see you on the next one. Later.